Yes. And it was interesting that you said, you know, that we perhaps represent, you know, a fear for mothers. Um, there are a few other things in there as well. I think we also can be represent the path not taken in a positive way as well, in an envious way. We can also hold up to them unconsciously what their life might have been like had they not had their children, the things they might have been able to do, the things they might have been able to dedicate themselves to. And that can be very uncomfortable. I know I've made some of my old friends uncomfortable. It took me a long time to, to, to see past my own envy of their lives to realise that there were parts of mine that they also longed for. You know, some of the two, I had too much time, they had too little time. But also one of my very dear girlfriends, who is the, the mother of my eldest godson, in very early days of Gateway Women, you know, and my blogging, so sort of 2011, and she was reading my blogs. And she spoke to me one day and she said, I've been reading your work and I can, I can read and I can feel how much pain you're in. And I really want to understand this. And she said, the only way I can really connect with what you're feeling is to, is to imagine my son dying. That's the only way I can contact what it is you're talking about. I mean, I'm, she is an exceptionally, courageously empathic woman. And that really helped me because I thought, OK, from the moment you conceive onwards as a mother, I really understand this. It is your biggest fear that your child will die. Every time they are out of your sight, it is that fear that you are managing in your life. Are they okay? And I thought, well, if that's what I'm asking, if that's what it takes for them to really understand my pain, is it any wonder they don't go there? And is it unreasonable of me to expect them to do so? I think it takes a lot of work to empathise with us it's not. It's very difficult for our, our own mothers to do because, in a way, they can't ever really know what it's like to be a childless woman because then they wouldn't have us. It, it requires a level of kind of empathic gymnastics that it's not impossible, but I think we need to recognise that it can be very difficult. And I think what I'd love to do is to maybe normalise that being hard and maybe to start create a framework around how to think about it and how to feel about it so that childless and child-free women can and their friends and family who are who are parents can maybe understand a little bit about how to speak across that divide and how to understand each other because there's so many misunderstandings in that space that cause so many problems in friendships and families i support thousands of women and most of them have got, are either going through a terrible situation with at least one member of their friends or family, or are pretty much estranged from them because of this issue. It causes such pain. It does cause a lot of pain. And I, I feel that myself in various ways within my family and with certain friends. And I love what you're saying about this like empathic gymnastics and really conflict resolution requires that we take time to understand what it's like to be in another person's shoes and how that needs to happen in both directions. But I think we've been expecting it to be easy. And I think that speaks partly to, you know, the fact as women in our culture, we have been sort of trained to be empathic to think about other people. And I think when we when it comes to this issue, many of many women who do become mothers, and I'm not going to say all mothers because it's unique, everyone's unique, struggle with this issue and their friends are surprised that they struggle with this issue. And I think what we need to normalize is that this is a really hard conversation to have. And we need tools and support and frameworks to help us with it. This is not just about talking about, you know, can you have a look at this mole on my back? Do you think he's having an affair? You know, this is, this is a conversation that gets to the very heart of female identity. And when, when women are standing on opposite sides of that identity and within pronatalism, one on the winning side of that identity and one on the losing side of that identity to some shape or other, it's hardly rather like conversations about race. 
this is one of those conversations that is full of landmines and we need to expect those landmines we need to prepare for them and we need to recover from them more quickly this is a this is a tough conversation to have yes and that's so important to name that it it it, yeah, it is It is similar to the race conversation and just that people don't want to go there because it's so uncomfortable. And the because chances are you'll get it so wrong. confronting. Yes, yes. That, that you won't say the right thing or someone will be hurt or offended. And um, there's so many ways that it could just not go well, potentially, which it doesn't mean that it went, you know, mm. that it went poorly, <laughs> but at least you're having the conversation. But I guess if we could normalize it not going well, Yes. So that it didn't feel like a personal failure or that your friend didn't love you or that you were a problem, but that actually, if we could actually just say, this is actually a really hard conversation to have. We're probably going to get this wrong. Can we extend to each other the, the ability to get this wrong and recover? Yes. And because ultimately, like in any relationship, it's conflict brings us closer. Mm hmm. And that's often why a lot of friendships I'm seeing, and I've experienced it personally, um, between women with and without children, particularly between grieving childless women and their friends who've become mother, it, it can be very different for women who've chosen not to have children, because many of them do not feel the grief, and they are not longing for the identity of motherhood. So they sort of, they may look the same from the outside, but they're often coming from a very different internal position in that dialogue. And I've lost my point there, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Yes, I I agree that we can look the same on the outside, childless Mm. and child-free, but on the inside, it's very different experiences. And Yes, I remember now what I was going to say, which is you mentioned about things being left unspoken. And within friendships between childless women and their friends who've become mothered, one of the reasons those friendships often kind of fall apart is actually because the truth isn't being spoken. I describe them because intimacy and honesty are actually aspects of the same thing. And what I see in a lot of friendships is that they go on to a sort of intimacy light kind of level where there's a bit of a sort of a dance around what I call the baby elephant in the room, where the hard conversation is not being had about how we both feel about where we've ended up. And because the, and the friendship takes on a slightly performative quality, it almost becomes like a kind of replay of the friendship we used to have, but it's not live anymore. And after a while, it becomes incredibly unsatisfying to both people because everyone knows that they're kind of faking it because the energy isn't really there. The the friendship isn't evolving. It's stuck at a place where it no longer is. And that's because the intimacy is degrading because the hard conversation is not happening. And what happens a lot in those friendships is either they go on pause 